to do an a physics experiment with this motorized fan. If I put it on a smooth surface, like something that's not my hand, then it's actually going to move in a circle, sort of like this, with its axis being right here. All right, so this is a motorized fan. So it's basically just a fan on wheels, and it's going to move if I turn it on like this. So it's going to move in something that's approximately a circle with an axis right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to time its revolution, meaning once it appears like this again, up straight, then I'm going to hit the clock. So here's the clock. Uh, let's hit it in three, two, one, start. Five point nine one. Angular versus tangential velocity. So if you don't know the difference between the two, you can sort of imagine a record player. And if you put a few objects on the record player as it was spinning, since it's spinning at a constant rate, all three of these would have the same angular velocity because, I mean, you can kind of think of angular velocity as the percent of the total orbit you've completed uh, because it's basically uh, the rate of your change in angle over time. And tangential velocity is kind of like regular velocity in that it just... Uh, your rate of change. It's just the distance you travel over the time. So this is your average tangential velocity over one full, well, it's not really a vector, over one full revolution. So what I've done is I've measured two quantities. All right, so if you don't know, first of all, let's see our times. So our time measurement one was for one revolution. And it was 5.91 seconds. And time 2 was for 2 revolutions. And it was 11.59. But that's for 2 revolutions, so we divide it by 2. And that gives us about 5.845. Which I'll just round up to 5.85 seconds per revolution. So we have two data points. 5.91 and 5.85. So, we're going to take the average of them, which is going to be 11.76. And uh, dividing 11.76 by 2, you get 5.88. So, on average, it takes 5.88 seconds for one revolution. So, now, uh, now we're going to measure the radius of the orbit, which uh, looks like we have a meter stick coming just in handy, so uh, we have to measure the long side of this, preferably right about here, so 90, okay, 88, so about 12 centimeters, oops, so 12 centimeters, which if we convert it to meters is 0.12 meters, so that means that the average tangential velocity is going to be equal to 2 pi times 0.12 divided by the time, which was on average 5.88. Now I... Alright, so now uh, let's keep going. Oh, uh, I guess... Alright, so now we're going to find the average velocity... So that's 2 pi times, our meter stick went up to millimeters in accuracy, so we're going to go 0.1, so I'm pretty sure that uh, no one cares about this place, centimeter and millimeter. So that's 0 0.120 meters divided by the time, which was 5.88 seconds, which gives rise to about approximately, we're only doing this to three sig sigs because of this and that, 0.128 meters per second. And that's the tangential velocity, or you can find the average angular velocity, which is just the tangential velocity over r. So that's just going to be equal to 0.128 divided by 0 0.120, which is about... Okay. 
1.069 or just 1.07 so we're rounding this to three sig figs so 1.07 um meters oh uh, no not meters radians per second so yeah there's the angle so now the problem with this thing is that it doesn't quite have a direction so it's not a vector so we can just show the tangential velocity is a vector and it's basically if you've ever taken the derivative of something it's like the derivative of the curve that it's going in at some point so it's kind of like a tangent line but its length or its magnitude is just this big fat number that we calculated right here so that's the tangential velocity and actually if you observe how they change so they change kind of like this if you take these two vectors and subtract them using well i guess the parallelogram method or something you'll get this very small vector right You have this very small vector right here, which points directly to the center. Uh, and that centripetal acceleration, whose magnitude we will calculate right now. So centripetal acceleration magnitude is just the mass. Wait, no, not the mass. The tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. So that's going to be so to three sig figs. That's about 0.137 meters per second squared. So uh, that's the centripetal acceleration. Since it points to the center and the tangent line is always uh, perpendicular to one of the radii, the tangent line is actually perpendicular always, or the tangential velocity is always perpendicular.